Okay, so just want to show you what I've been playing with. I'm trying to use this uh, WPL C34. This is the ready to run version. Okay, so it comes with the transmitter and everything like that. It comes with the, you know, a smaller motor than say versus the uh, C34KM, which is the kit metal version. Um, so what I've done is I've uh, taken the body apart. Um, my intent was to open up all the doors, that sort of thing. Um, it already comes with opening doors and hoods, so it's more so just working on the back and uh, making it so I can fit a uh, action figure inside because it looks kind of goofy having a RC vehicle driving around by itself. Uh, these wheels are a little bit different than the stock wheels. I actually let me get them. I took off the stock wheels and uh, these are what the stock wheels look like um, I didn't really like them I'm, I, I like deep dish wheels that sort of thing um, and so what happened is I picked up these wheels um, I got everything off of Amazon and I picked up these wheels um, off of Amazon and what I did is I reversed um, the, the rim so you can see the um, can see the uh, metal uh, uh, the hub okay the rim itself is supposed to be going the other way I flipped it around so I got more of a deep dish sort of look it almost looks like a 70s slotted wheel aluminum slotted wheel uh, I only put in a couple of the screws to hold it for now just temporarily um, I did have to make some modifications to the front axle uh, because the front axle was rubbing uh, right in there. So I had to um, disassemble the front axle and shave down that area right inside there. Uh, let me get a little pointy thing. Yeah, right inside there because it was contacting the back of this hub and the car wasn't rolling right. So I just used an X-Acto knife and shaved it down once I took out the, the uh, uh, drive shaft, that sort of thing. Um, these are the original these are the tires that came with the aluminum rims um, i swapped them around they are slightly sh shorter okay so if you take a look here you can actually see they're a little tiny bit shorter i believe these are 67 millimeters and these are 70 if i'm not mistaken so the total height difference um, uh, you know it's, it's small, but it is noticeable. Um, it, it did cause some clearance issues with the back, so I did have to do some cutting of the rear fender area, that sort of thing. Um, to fit the figure in, I had to cut part of the firewall here, so that's all gone. Um, aside from that, the chassis is all stock. Oops, lost the tire. So um, what I ended up doing, get my tire back. Uh, you know, these WPL kits are really cool because they're just like giant model cars. Um, I sort of said that when I played around with the uh, uh, the other WPL kit that I had, this, uh, the D42, I believe that's the number. It's the van. It's, uh, it's whatever this van is right there. That one right there. When I cut it apart and everything like that. This one actually I think is made a little bit better. I like the chassis on design on this one better it's, it's it's they're two different vehicles this one is all-wheel drive uh, four-wheel drive whatever you want to call it and this one's just rear-wheel drive it's a different chassis layout and um, it actually is really nice and tight this one's kind of loosey-goosey but you know if you're doing you know any sort of off-roading or crawling it'll do fine that sort of thing so I took the uh, vehicle apart and uh, the, the, the little quandary that I had is that I potentially may want to remove, remove the roof. So the spare tire carrier was actually on the back over here. And so I had to think about how I was going to do the doors. You know, initially I thought I was going to do like just the top open up like that, that sort of thing, and just keep this all, you know, uh, you know, all untouched. But then I realized that like, you know, I, you know, it, it's going to be kind of, difficult because I'm gonna have the spare tire here so um, I said you know what I'm just gonna cut open everything so I just use the back 
the back edge of an X-Acto knife. Okay, not the front edge, the back edge, because the back edge is dull. And then so you can run it along the lines, the scored lines where the doors are, um, and then just keep basically tearing away at the plastic. It takes a little while and your fingers get are pretty tired afterwards, but um, it's pretty good because you see what happens. See, you can, I don't know if you can see this cut right here. If you use the sharp edge, it's, the knife sort of goes wherever it wants to. It goes off road there. A little bit you know but if you use the back edge like see this line right there I could follow along the back edge of the knife along this line here and it stays in there for the most part but you got to use some good finger strength and basically it's the back edge of this blade tearing away at the plastic so I did that um, for the doors and you can see this is where the license plate holder used to be this is the door over here and you see there's a little bit of a ridge on the top here well, that's going to help me, I hope, because what happens is the top edge of this, the top half, I'm sorry, the bottom, <laughs> the bottom edge of this top half of the door is going to ride inside this ridge. So what I have here, I have a bunch of little mini hinges and it didn't come with screws. It was supposed to come with screws, but it did not. So, you know, just make, uh, you know, lemonade out of lemons. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I am going to put a hinge here and put a hinge here. Um, and um, hopefully what will happen is with that ridge, this will sit inside here. And then when I open, uh, you know, one door, the both halves are gonna open up. That's what's supposed to work in theory. Now you'll notice also something. It, it's very slight and notice that I don't have the roof. Um, you know all the way mounted on the back half of the body here but you'll actually see that this part of the body and this part of the body is actually on one plane and then once it goes to this point the body actually curves in a little bit okay so I'm gonna keep that in mind when I'm doing the doors so with that in mind I'm gonna put a hinge here and I'll put a hinge here Hopefully the two hinges will um, suffice. The doors aren't very heavy. It's just to, you know, keep them attached to the body basically. And because I have um, nails instead of screws in this little kit, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna drill holes, two holes for each hinge. You can see all the little hinges. All right, and uh, what happens is, actually, let me just open it up. See what I'm talking about. So these are these are really cool little hinges. I, I put them all over this guy there. I use it for the windows, for the back hatch, that sort of thing, for the front doors. But yeah, that one has all this stuff um, cut open. I, I did a video on that. So you can see there's um, two holes here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two holes for each hinge on the body and on the door. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the hole just big enough so that I can fit one of these little teeny nails through, all right? So it's gonna be press fit, and then when I press fit them in, I'm going to um, use a little bit of glue. These nails don't bend, unfortunately, and they're super hard, so I'm not gonna bother cutting, but what's gonna happen is on the back side, on the back side, the nails are gonna stick out, and you know what, I don't really care. Um, if you want to get, you know, all tidied up, you can always cut off the nails, that sort of thing. But I'm just going to leave them as is. I'm kind of sort of like do it and done sort of guy. All right, so, so that's what's going to happen with that. And uh, you can see I had to cut apart the interior. I cut out the base of where the seat otherwise would go. The seat was up here. And then when it's up there, you can't really fit an action figure, fit a little dude inside. Uh, so this is going to drop the seat and basically once this is in, I'm going to basically glue this to the body so that it just sort of fills the hole basically. And maybe I'll put some stuff to sort of hold the seat up a little bit. And uh, I also cut off the bottom parts of the dashboard to uh, these areas right here and over here just so I can get more leg room. And uh, this deal mounts right over here like that. Um, I cut off as much as I could without sacrificing where the steering wheel mounts. And then maybe, I, you know, if I feel like it, I'll do a little detailing with some silver paint. So paint the spokes of this steering wheel. 
Um, you know, the yellow's not bad. The yellow's growing on me. I was going to paint it, uh, you know, one of the colors I had down in the basement. I was going to do like a metallic green, but I kind of like this yellow now. It's kind of a yellow orangey color, so it's nice. Um, you can see I popped out all the the glass and everything like that. It's super easy to work on these. It just has a press fit, has like little locks on the back. And you just press on the tabs and push them out, that sort of thing. Everything all sort of comes apart really easily. So these cars are really fun to modify and customize. So hopefully the doors will work as planned. And uh, the rationale by keeping the panel separate um, is so that I can remove the top if I want to. Um, so that seems to be the deal. All right, and uh, there's some other little spare parts. There's a person I was test fitting in there, and uh, that'll do it. Okay, so I'm done. So uh, seems to ride okay. I didn't put all the bolts and nuts in the wheels, but they look pretty cool. Again, I reversed them, and uh, so we got the car all together. I left the doors off for a little bit just to see what it's gonna look like. Uh, but the nice thing about what I did is I could put the doors in the back now. So, ah, they go Shang-Chi. So these are just thrown on top. <clears throat> so now I got these doors on the back, which is cool. So um, they're held with a couple of hinges. Um, again, I, I made them so that I could still take the roof off. So there's actually, a split right here uh, in the middle of the door um, for now I just use a little bit of just a little piece of masking tape just to hold them together otherwise they would they would separate a little bit um, I had to modify the spare tire holder and I'm um, just using one of the bolts actually from one of the wheels um, to just put that on there nothing permanent uh, but you can see I have these now I can open this up and what I did, I used a couple pieces of metal. Um, it's just the top of a like a tuna fish can, a uh, little bit of metal on some of the plastic that I cut out here um, from the base of the seat um, that was at a 90 degree angle. And uh, so I just put a little piece of metal uh, and then I put a couple of little magnets here, little craft magnets. These are the rare earth magnets on both sides here. So then that way we can uh, close the door and they stay nice and tight, that sort of thing. So I think, uh, you know, I like the yellow. I'm gonna leave the yellow, but it's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it looks a little bit, you know, rough on the edges here. You can always fill that in, that sort of thing. But at least now um, two people can fit in here. They're at semi-normal height uh, before I did the modifications to the interior. Um, I couldn't fit any of the bigger uh, six inch figures. They're all varying a little bit, but um, Scarlet G.I. Joe could fit here and I really had to squish her in. Um, and then, you know, just put the little stickers and all that fun stuff. But I think it turned out pretty good. All right.